Hey there, enjoyers, and everyone who's joining us today. My name is Christian. And my name is Aaron. And we at Enjoy Church want to welcome you to our live online Sunday service streamed directly to you from here in our Sunshine location. That's right. We hope you're doing really well. And we are praying that you and your families will be blessed today. Today, we've got some praise and worship, an encouraging word from Pastor Georgie, and also a Kid Mania program coming right up. We want to give a special shout out to our Adelaide location family who are joining us online today. So right from the start, lean in, stay connected, engage with the live chat because our hosts are ready to connect with you and answer any questions that you might have. And most importantly, share today's service link with your friends, with your family. And if you're joining us on Facebook Live, it's so easy. Just hit that share button with all your friends because you know it here at Enjoy Church. No one streams alone. Together, we are in for an amazing time. Enjoy the service.
Let's enter his gates with thanksgiving and courts with praise. Let's go. Come on, put your hands together wherever you find yourself today. Let's sing it up. We believe that what we ask you, we receive because God, you're all. Come on. Not a man that you should tell. Come on. Your word stands to the end.
Come on and join us. If there's joy in your heart, if you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today, why don't you lift a shout of praise? Everybody who's watching it online, why don't you lift a shout of praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Psalms 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Who's glad this morning to be in the house of the Lord? Who's glad online, who's watching with us, wherever you are, whoever's house you're in, friendship group, won't you lift a shout of praise? We are glad to be worshipping in the house of our Father today. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful sight. I'm going to try and hold it together right now. What a beautiful sight to see God's children worshipping. Worshipping every hand, raised, lifting up the name of Jesus. We love being able to meet in person here at our Sunshine location. And equally, we love seeing people from around the world jumping into our online services, leaning in, tuning in, and connecting over the last eight months. We've seen that no matter if we're meeting in person or online, God continues to build His church. There is no restrictions that will stop God from building His church. Amen. We want to welcome everyone who's in here in person. We want to welcome everyone who's streaming in online today in your homes or in your friendship groups. We hope you're doing really well today. And we are praying that you and your families will be blessed today. Thank you, church, for leaning in, for never giving up, for being faithful. If you're watching it online, our online hosts are ready to chat with you. If you have any questions, you just type that in and they'll get back to you straight away. A huge shout out. You guys may take your seats. I haven't said that in a long time. I wonder how many people were sitting down when they're watching their services at home. So maybe you should stand up the whole time. But a huge shout out to our Adelaide location who are watching in today online. We are excited that next week you get to go back to your, your, your in-person services and we're really excited for you. And our Osaka family who are meeting in person today, congratulations. We are praying for you. We are celebrating you. If you try to register today for our in-person services and weren't able to, we sincerely apologize. Our hearts go out to you. As you know, we've got restrictions and a limited amount of people that can come to these services. But if you keep an eye on your inbox, we'll be sending an email out to you in the coming days. And we're going to try and get as many groups of people in for our in-person services over the next few weeks. All right. Vision 2021. All right. What a month it has been. I have been encouraged by our vision, Kingdom Alignment. Pastor Shane and Pastor George, you bring in that vision a few weeks ago. I love seeing all the stories of God's faithfulness in this season. And that's what it's all about, God's faithfulness in this season. And if you haven't had the opportunity to read about Vision 2021 or watch the many stories that are there, you can jump on enjoy.church forward slash vision and you can see the stories there. You can watch the vision and you have an opportunity to, to pledge your commitment card if you haven't done so already. Christmas is coming up. For me, one of my favorite things is shopping for someone else. The, the joy that when they open the present and they, they get exactly what they wanted because they left little letters around the house, yeah? Who loves giving here, yeah? Who loves receiving more than giving? Yeah, well, we've got a couple. Oh, that's all right, I like that as well. We'll make sure we'll give you a present. True religion is all about the gift of giving. And after this, this segment right now, we're gonna actually watch a testimony, a story of the blessing of being able to give. And it's not just a present that's material. It's something that changes a family's life forever. So we're going to watch that after this segment. 2 Corinthians 9, 10. And it'll be up on the screens and it'll be on the L3 for everyone watching online. It says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, He will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity 
of generosity in you. This has always been about our heart and where we put our trust. In me or in God, we can testify as enjoyers, right? We've seen so many video testimonies over the last eight months that the more we trust and submit to God, every area of our lives, yeah, the more we see His faithfulness come through, the more we, we can trust that His promises are yes and amen, the more we have precedent to build upon and know that God will be there for us in the next situation, and the more peace that comes into our lives. We are a generous church. Enjoy church. Can I get an amen? We are a generous church. And we and he will increase the harvest of the things pertaining to kingdom culture, to kingdom alignment. A great harvest, it says, of generosity, of goodness, of love. You see, church, I'm not here to focus on the giving, but I'm here to encourage you, me, and everybody watching today that that when we, when we step into kingdom culture and kingdom principles, we step into a life of freedom and in fullness. 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 Say it with me. Fullness. Amen. Why don't we bow our heads wherever we are in the auditorium or at home, wherever you're watching. Father God, we thank you that your principles are true. They, they, they transcend every situation. The known and the unknown, God, you are faithful in every step of the way, God. I pray that, that our eyes will be focused on kingdom, on kingdom culture. And we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness over this last year. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, before we cross over to a video, there will be prompts on how to give online. And, and, and if you're here and you want to head to the hub after the service, there'll be options to do that there as well. Um, we're going to cross to... Uh, true religion story today. And I've watched this quite a few times and my heart goes out. The generosity of Enjoy Church is amazing. And this time, we're going to ask the Kid Mania team, if there are any kids in the auditorium, this is the time for you guys to be able to head outside and Pastor Luke will be running a Kid Mania program. Why don't we turn to the video? <laughs> My name is Sob Sambad and I'm 22 years old. I dropped out of school in the seventh grade. My dad used to be the village leader, however, he lost his position. My dad had to migrate to find work, leaving my mum and I alone. We owed so much money, I had to sell our house. Our neighbours didn't want anything to do with us. They were afraid to even speak with us in case we asked them for money. My mum became seriously ill and I wasn't well either. We lost all hope. I would lie there and cry all day, stressed and depressed, until I made myself sick and that only made things worse. I tried raising pigs but they ate their own young and died. I tried raising chickens but they died as well. Our cats and dogs even died. There was zero joy, only grief. We honestly thought it would be better if we died too. I felt so alone, like I was in the middle of a river with nothing to hold on to. I had no hope to speak of. Then one day my sister came to visit me and she said, you should go to the church. Perhaps there is a God who can help you. People could see what a difficult state we were in, both physically and emotionally. God led us to Pastor Con, who helped us. He became like a father to me and told me not to lose hope, but to keep persevering. He hired an agriculture trainer so we could learn how to grow vegetables. In cement sacks, we grew garlic, herbs, lemongrass. And all the while that I was learning to grow crops, I started going to church and learning about God. And my faith in God began to grow little by little. God helped me pray and give my worries over to Him. He blessed us with a fish tank, a well, and now I'm raising pigs, fish, cows, chickens. I can't keep up. It's a complete turnaround. 
My son is healed, I am healed, my husband is healed. Villagers used to mock me, saying fish raised in a tank will be inedible. I told them, this is a blessing of God for my family. I will persevere until I succeed. Now we have more than we need and enough to sell and make money. Those that mocked us were left in awe of the power of God. When God is with me, I can do all things without fear. My whole family now believes in God. I share my story with others who are going through hard times and I encourage them to turn to God. I thank God every day for bringing me back to life. God is so amazing because no matter what mistakes I make, He is there to protect me. Enjoy us to partner with our four Cambodian villages this year. Please visit the True Religion webpage scroll through and select what you would like to purchase and then check out using our very simple shopping cart process. Yeah, so good. How wonderful that we can make such a difference in somebody's life, hey? Oh my goodness, I'm so glad to have my mask off. I'm allowed to have it up here. Hey, look, I've just thought of something. If you're trying to work out how can I sing and have my mask off, just start jumping and praising because that's the same as running, isn't it? I don't know if it is. I don't know if I should be telling you that. But I'm like, because I'm sucking the thing in as I'm trying to jump around and praise God. And I'm like, God, there's got to be a way. I'm running. I'm exercising. I can do this. At least for one song, at least for the first praise song, I could do that. But you know what? I, was, I put on my, as I was singing in my mask, you know, just sometimes the odd things that just give you a revelation of something. You know, I'm singing with my mask and suddenly I become aware that my mask is vibrating because of the power of my singing. You know what? All of creation vibrates when we sing and we worship our God. As we worship God, you may not always see it, you may not always feel it, but God is at work and things are vibrating, things are moving, things are changing. Oh, I encourage you today. It's so good to see you. Oh my goodness, somebody in the flesh. Like, welcome to all those that are online. So good to have you with us. But I personally am so excited, I'm sorry, that to see people in the flesh. Why don't you, if there's somebody near to you that you're allowed to do this, why don't you chicken wing them and say this to them, oh my goodness, you're real. You're real. We've got real people in the building. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, whoops, I've started, I've started an ever avalanche. I'm forgetting I'm at Enjoy Church. What a good problem to have though, isn't it? What a good problem to have that we love one another and that we love connecting and relating with one another. It's so exciting to have you here. Thank you for registering online, for doing the right thing. Thank you for coming. And uh, we're excited for those that will be coming next week as well, which is going to be amazing. But we're going to get into the Word of God, so why don't we pray? Father God, we thank You so much for this incredible day, Lord. This is truly the day that You have made, Lord God. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, that we have begun to, Lord, see the dawn break, Lord God. We have begun to see things change, Lord, and we are able to gather together. Lord, it may be small in numbers now, but Lord God, everything I've seen You do, Lord God, Father, it may start small, but it never stays small. So we are excited, Lord God, to gather in Your house, to declare Your praises, to declare Your name. And Lord God, we are excited. And so Lord, I pray, Father, for every person here. Lord, every heart, may it be open before Your Word. Come and speak to us. We honour You today. Because ultimately, Lord, this is all about You. We love You. And we bless You when we're leaning to You today. In Jesus' wonderful Name. And if you agree, why don't you shout it? Amen. Amen. Yes. And why don't we actually thank our worship team? Didn't they do an amazing job? So good. They've been serving so, so consistently, so faithfully throughout this whole time, na navigating and, and, and negotiating all the different limitations and things, but made it work so we can have worship online and now we're able to have it in the flesh. It's so very, very cool. Well, today I want to speak to you about something that's been on my mind over the last few weeks. It's just been on my mind because who knows that? Who knows the term? We know it in Victoria, the, the double donuts. 
double, we should have had donuts out today, shouldn't we? But double donuts. Today is 30 days in Victoria with no new COVID cases and no COVID related deaths. This is so exciting. You know, things are starting to change. They're starting to get better. And so the topic I want to talk to you about today is kind of an interesting one. Um, Seeing as we are at the point where we're seeing things change. And it's really something that I've actually seen. I've been a little surprised to see even um, been a challenge in my own life. And I am somebody who just loves to come into the house of God. But it's been a challenge in my own life. And I've, as I've spoken to others, they've also found the same thing, that there's a little bit of a challenge, no matter what your personality type. And the challenge is the struggle now after we've been waiting for all this time to get our, some of our freedoms back is to actually fully embrace all the freedoms that we've received. And that we are receiving. You find people still hesitant. Now, I understand that there are all kinds of reasons for that. There are legitimate reasons for that. But inside of us, it's almost like this resistance has built um, against some of the things that we're actually longing for. I was thinking about, you know, the the freedoms, all these things that we were looking forward to. Walking freely down the streets. Doesn't it sound so simple? Walking freely down the streets, seeing friends, driving wherever you want to go and as far as you want to go, interacting with others, being able to embrace those that you love, the people in your world that you love, going to church like we are today and seeing your friends. Yes. Hanging out for a coffee, although it may be a brief one today. But hanging out for a coffee, worshipping together, wasn't that just incredible? That's the thing I've missed the most, I'd say, is worshipping together. It's been the stuff that our dreams have been made of. And yet, as I said before, there's almost been like there's this, I find in people and even sometimes within myself, a strange resistance of events against stepping fully into it in case I step over a line, in case I do something that I really shouldn't do. And then we've got really cautious guidelines and yet I'm still finding there's a, just, a, just a hesitation of stepping back in again. And as I thought about it, I thought, you know what, I don't think this happened so much during the first lockdown. See, the first lockdown, we went, wow, okay, heads down, we can do this, this is temporary, we'll do it. We went through the first lockdown, we came out the other side, they went, that's okay. We bounced back out in straight into life again. But this second lockdown, who knows sometimes the enemy just loves to hit you with a second hit. You know, you think that you've come through the first hit and then he comes and whacks you with a second hit. And it's the second hit that can have the effect on you. And, and here we go right now, we're in this second lockdown and it's like, it's different. We didn't expect it. This is strict. This is long. I looked it up, 188 days in lockdown. A third of our, over a third of our, um, actually over half, I should say, of our um, year has been spent in lockdown. And we've been forced and pressed to form new habits and new rhythms in our life. We've become accustomed to a strange new normal. Now, we know it's in our head, we understand this is COVID normal. This isn't normal. But you know what? For all good intents, in our life, it just becomes normal. Things like, and we start to do these things. We start to stay in. We're staying in, we're ordering in. I had to go get something from the shops the other day and I'm like, the first, the crazy thing was the first thought came to my mind and went, I wonder if I could order that in. I just get them to deliver it to me. I don't need to go to the shops. What, what is wrong with me? I mean, this is a person who loves, who gets half her exercise wandering around the shops. So I don't need to go to the gym so much, I just need to go to the shops. But you know, we start staying in, ordering in, staying away, disconnecting becoming insular and isolated, creating new routines, living within new limitations, distrusting even some of the most familiar aspects of our life, wary of people, not touching, not looking, not doing anything that's not comfortable. We only do the comfortable things and we only do it when it's comfortable. The evolution of the lounge suit. Anyone ever heard about the lounge? I didn't even know there was a lounge suit until I went to donate blood during the the lockdown time. And I had ordered a couple of sets of like, you know, uh, wind cheaters and track pants because I was inside and I was like, it was winter. And I'm like, okay, I'll get myself something comfortable. So I had a matching set. And I get in and I get there and the nurse is chatting away to me and she's so lovely. And then she goes, oh, I love your lounge suit. And I'm like, I'm looking down seeing a wind cheater and track pants. She's looking at me asking, where did you get it? It's so lovely. 
ready to get your lounge seat. You know what? We're in this place. We've adapted to a life that we never thought we'd ever live. We've adapted to this new way of living. And yes, it was in a sense, it was a survival instinct. Yes, it was required. Yes, it was submitting to the authorities, which is biblical. Yes, unless they cross God's line, it's biblical. It was the right thing to do in this season that we've been in. But now, but now, but now, now is the time. Now is the time to begin to throw these things, some of these things off. Yes, we do it within the guidelines that we've been given, but we've got to take the whole thing. We've got to take a hold of it. When you're given some freedom, don't go halfway into that freedom. We need to decide that we're going to grab a hold of it and do it. Because you know what? If we don't, what will happen is we will find ourselves living this small life. And the crazy thing is it'll be by our own choice. It'll be our own choice. It reminds me of a passage in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 11 to 13 in the Message Bible. And it's Paul addressing the church in Corinth. He could have been addressing the church in Victoria. But he's addressing the church in Corinth. And he's talking about all the trials that he's gone through. Anyone been through a trial lately? Yeah. He's been talk, he's talking about all the trials he's been through. And then he goes straight into writing these words to them from that. He says, Dear, dear Corinthians... I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide, open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. I love this. Open up your eyes. Live openly and expansively. In other words, we've been through a challenging time. Yes, we're still coming through a challenging time. And we've been living according to the requirements and the rhythms of this world. But I want to encourage you now to begin to form for yourselves new rhythms. Begin to form for yourself rhythms for life. Rhythms that will be conducive to you living the fullness of the life that God has still got for you. See, that hasn't changed. In 188 days, does not a life make? Unless you're born during that time. But even that, you've still got the rest of your life ahead of you. And we don't want to stay in this place because we kind of got used to it. We got pressed into it and now it's become our comfort zone. We need to address the way that we think and the way that we see things. Romans 12 verse 2, what does it say? It says, and do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what? Our lives are made to bring glory to God. Our lives are here to declare the wonder of His will. Our lives are here to bring and draw people to God. Our lives, but it only will happen the way it's supposed to happen as we live our life fully for Jesus as we live our life fully the way He created us to, you know what? That's what will lead to flourishing. That's what will lead to your life um, being grounded and and growing the way it's supposed to. Because you have been created in the image of God. You know that, yeah? Nudge the person next to you and say, you've been been, um, created in the image of God. Absolutely. And you have been. And who is our God? Is our God a small God? Has he been made by hands of man? No, he is not. He is a large God. He is a glorious God. He is a fruitful God in everything that he does and everything that he touches. Now is the time to step out and continue moving forward. We may have had a season but we're coming through just like we've come out of winter into summer. I want to encourage you, guess what? Today around Australia, maybe Melbourne's an exception right now, today, but the truth is across Australia, an unprecedented heat wave is hitting our nation for this time of year. I want to tell you, we are moving into something that God is wanting us to step into and understand it's time to rise up. We don't want to be slow in doing it. This is not the time for us to live small. We are created in the image of God. So don't allow fear to become your life coach. Don't let those those 188 days of experience, don't let that become your life, the stamp upon your life that leads you. Don't let it set the rhythms of your life. Fear will cause you just to flow with the rhythms of this world. But God's Spirit is calling you 
to understand who you are and to build rhythms for life into your life. The rhythms of this world will leave you subject to emotions and circumstances and fears and insecurities and other people's opinions and so much more. Whereas the rhythms for life will set you up for all the promises God has for you. They will guide your feet in the dark times and they will keep you steady and grounded in the good times. You might say, isn't it the other way around? Doesn't God just keep you steady and grounded in the dark times and guide your feet in the good times? No, sometimes in the good times is when we lose our footing. Because it's like, oh, I can do whatever. Oh, the, the sun is out and I've lo- we've lost our five kilometre radius, beach time. The whole weekend. Oh, I know we've got church, I'll do that some other time. You know what? God wants to set you up for a win. He wants to set your life in, t- into motion that's going to bring about the fullness of the promises He has for you. Another word for rhythms could be habits. Habits are regular patterns and responses we form towards things and peoples and situations in our lives. They form a current in our lives that move us towards a certain direction. You know, the dictionary actually says that habits are an acquired behaviour pattern regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. In other words, when we take the, take the time to form the right habits, the right rhythms for life they will into our lives, these are the things that will happen. They will lead us to where we want to go. They will lead us to where we want to go. The second thing is, they, you know what, they actually reduce the stress in your life. Because there's so much stress is caused often when change because we're constantly having to make new decisions. We didn't have to make this decision before. Now we're having to make a decision and, and another decision. And I used to just be able to flow. You know what? A, 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 a rhythm, a habit will actually allow you, will take the stress out of your life because now you come to a place where you've almost formed an automatic response within. And then what that does is then free up your mind, your emotions, your life to dream and think about the bigger things. Dream and think about the eternal things, the the more important and larger aspects of your life. So it actually takes stress out of your life. Whereas the rhythms of this world are often unintentional. Anyone notice bad habits aren't usually by choice. They're usually things that happen unintentionally. Then it leaves us open to every wind and wave. You know, if you have a patch of soil, anyone had a patch of soil somewhere, anywhere, You've pulled out a plant, great plant and you've got a patch of soil or maybe you've got a new one. Who knows? We all know that you, take, you do that. If you don't plant something good and wholesome in there, you know exactly what's going to happen. The weeds are going to come. The winds will blow. Things will just land in that soil. They'll just land in there and suddenly they'll, next thing you know, you'll have a patch of weeds. And you're like, but I had a good, clean patch of soil here. I know I haven't put something in there yet, but how did this happen? Unintentional things. And it's the same with our lives. It's the same with the habits and the rhythms of our life. If you had a wholesome habit and this time, this season has pressed it out of your life during this COVID season, and then I would encourage you, you need to be replacing it with something healthy, with something wholesome, because otherwise unintentional rhythms will come and they will take a hold. And if you're not aware, you know what they're going to do. They're going to become like a silent undertow. Have you been to the beach lately? Maybe you have now. Once the five kilometre radius lifted, where everyone was like, the beach. All of a sudden, that's for those of us who don't live near the beach. Um, and it's like, but you go out there, if there's an undertow there, it'll quickly take you where you had no intention of going. I was only going a few feet out. The next thing I know, I'm like half a mile out to sea. All of a sudden, I'm like, I'm somewhere, all, somewhere I'm dragged along. I've done that before you go out. And it's like, there's, there's somebody on the beach that I'm with, a Shane or the kids or whatever. And I'm swimming and I'm playing around. And the next thing you know, I'm like, I'm down here. And they're still over there. I'm, I'm like, what happened? Well, there was a silent undertow that I wasn't aware of. So what are some of the healthy rhythms for life that may have been pressed out of shape or maybe even completely smashed during this year? If you found any of these have broken down, I want to encourage you to move forward. They need to be consciously rebuilt, reconstructed, healthy. They need to be rebuilt into your lives because rhythms for life are the channel that God sends life through to you. So here are a few. Fellowship, obvious one. Fellowship and connecting with others. Has that been smashed just a little through this season? Okay. Worship. Has it fallen by the wayside because there was no longer a live service, a regular moment set apart? 
and without realising it, you didn't realise that you didn't have another regular time set apart to worship God. You didn't have a worship live worship band. You didn't have your friends at the front alongside of you. You didn't have that. So fellowship and connecting with others, worship. Being committed to church every Sunday. You know what? We can watch online anytime. And I'm speaking to us. I'm speaking to the people online. We're so glad that you are watching with us online. But I want to tell you, the, the, the problem with being able to watch online at any time once it's up there is after a while you start to fit it in whenever it's... You know, it's like, well, there's nothing good on television, so let's watch church service. I wasn't... I didn't get to see it on Sunday. I didn't watch it on Sunday. But I want to encourage us to begin to reform this habit within our lives. Make a decision that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will gather with the saints. I won't just watch a service remotely online if there's another option. If there's not another option, watch a service online. But if there's no other, if there's if there's another option, let's get in here and make sure that we do this. That another one is serving the body. Serving the body. You know, sometimes it's easy to think because, oh, well, what I did was I made coffees, I greeted, I whatever it was, I did these things during our service on a Sunday. We don't do that anymore. We don't have that, uh, that available to us anymore. So I guess there's nothing for me to do. Guess what? The person next to you is still there, alive and breathing. They still need you. Yes? The body, you're still part of it. God is calling us to still serve the body. This is what God is calling us. There is still a need for you. Do not feel that you are now obsolete, not required, and you'll decide whether or not you'll get back into it again. Excuse me if this seems straight, but I just think, let's just talk straight, hey? Let's just be honest in this because God is looking for us. He's called us like he always had and he always will. We are part of the body. He wants us to be active in it. It's what we're here for. How about some things that aren't directly related to your faith but would still impact on it and in life in general? How about sleeping patterns? Anyone notice your sleeping patterns changed? Suddenly you're up late. You sleep late because you don't need to get up and go to work anymore. Maybe you, you can work from home. Maybe you're in that situation. Eating patterns. COVID kilos are a real thing. A glittery skirt covers many multitudes of sins. <laughs> Exercise patterns. I repeat, COVID kilos are a real thing. We need to get back into it. These are all things that are vital to keep our life moving forward in the right direction. And they are all things that if left to, them, to the rhythms of the world will end up causing an undertow. They'll end up becoming, sorry, un, uh, non-existent or inconsistent at best. And will cause it an undertow that drags us away from the very things that, that were very life that we want. What does it say in Hebrews 10, verse 25? Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. It says that. Why? Do you think those people woke up in the morning and went, I'm not gonna gather with the saints anymore? I don't, I don't think I'm gonna need that. No, I'm just not gonna. No, it's missed one. And then something else came up and they missed, and oh, there's somebody, a friend's wedding. Oh, somebody else has got a child. Oh, there's a child baptism. Oh, there's a, there's a work deal. And the next thing you know, they've got no habit at all. The habit has now changed according to the rhythms of the world. You know, maybe you're in this place and the thought of change since she was down your spine. Hello. I, I, I've learned to be very flexible as I live with my wonderful husband who is very spontaneous. And we all love that about him. But I've got to tell you, my natural self, I'm not necessarily a person that loves to change all the time. I like, I like routine. I like stability. I like all these things. So maybe you're like me and the thought of change sends a shiver down your spine. Maybe you're in this place and you're saying, I've had enough. I mean, haven't we all had enough? I don't want to change anymore. I've done enough. I've done like 188 days of changing and I don't, don't think I want to change anymore. Well, if that is you and you're over making decisions, then this is the best decision that you could ever make. Because if you remember the reason, the, the definition of the word habit, the definition of the word habit is that it will eventually form something that's automatic in your life. And you don't have to think about it anymore. Why is half the world in autom driving automatic cars? Because they don't want to have to think about the gear change in and out, the roundabouts of Caroline Springs and wherever else. They just want to be able to just put their foot down and go. See, it's like jumping on board a train. When we make a decision that we're going to set some healthy habits and some good rhythms for life up in our lives. What it does, like jumping on board a train. 
ever get on board a train, the biggest effort you have to make when you get on board a train is getting yourself to the station and buying the ticket and getting on the train, being there on time. That's it. You know, once you get on there, what it does, uh, it affords you the ability to take a seat. It affords you the ability to relax. It affords you the, the ability of rest that you wouldn't have had had you tried to walk or drive to the, your destination. But it allows you to relax. You know what? Making decisions to f- form good rhythms for life and healthy habits in your life, what it will do is it will re- allow you actually rest and ease in your life. The automatic life is just around the corner when you make this decision. The Pulitzer Prize winner and author of two books of effective habits, Charles Dewig says, everything we know about habits, from neurologists to organisational experts, is that any of them can be changed. Every habit, no matter how complex, is able to be reshaped. However, to modify a habit, you must decide to change it. You must consciously accept the work of identifying the habits and the routines that need changing and find alternatives. Once you understand that habits can change, you have the freedom and the responsibility to remake them. So I'm going to go quickly. How do, we, how do the experts say we should do it? Firstly, they say we need to decide that habits need to change. Hello, small but important starting point. Make a decision. The second one is choose what you want them to be replaced by. Remember the patch of soil. It needs to be replaced by something or else it will creep back in. The third one is practice how you want to respond. In other words, practice makes perfect. Begin to practice it. Begin to work on it. And finally, have a support group or role models around you to help reinforce the new habit and encourage you that in your own ability to change this. You know, sometimes we just need someone to go, you can do this. When we're feeling like the habit's getting on top of us. They're just like, they're right alongside you. So what tools does God give us to help with these steps? Firstly is prayer. So if we're trying to decide what habits to, that need to be changed and you're not really sure, ask God. Hello. Just ask God. Prayer is there. Ask Him what rhythms of life need to be built or rebuilt into your world. The second one is the Word. Find a scripture that supports the rhythm for life that you're looking to rebuild. Put it up on your mirror in, your dry, in the middle of your steering wheel. It can be, put it up in the behind your toilet door. Wherever you can actually take a moment to read it and maybe even read it out loud so you're not only seeing it with your eyes but you're speaking it and then you're hearing it. Reinfer- or reinforce it into yourself. Praying in the Spirit. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. That's available to anyone and everyone through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, because self-discipline is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So praying in tongues builds that up. And the Holy Spirit Himself, I love this. He is here as our comforter, as our teacher and our guide for life. So if you ask Him, He will help you to build rhythms for life into your daily routine and add to that the church, the ultimate support group, the ultimate cheer squad, cheer squad, uh, encouraging community, the place to be. And of course, Jesus Christ, because all of it stems from Him. I know that sounds obvious. Matthew 11, 28, verse 28 to 30, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, I love how the Message Bible puts those last couple of verses. It says, Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Whenever we're wanting to build in the rhythms for life into our lives, Jesus is always the first step. Jesus is always the ultimate answer. Jesus is always the cornerstone, the foundation for our lives. He is the one that is the source of our lives. You have to choose Him first. Maybe you're in this place or maybe you're watching us online And you haven't yet made a decision to ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord, to be your Saviour. You haven't asked Him yet to come into your world. You know what? He can forgive you of your past. He can give you a fresh start today. And if that is you today, I want to encourage you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And in just a moment, I'm going to give you the opportunity to pray that prayer for the first time or for another time if you feel that those undercurrents have taken you away. I want to encourage you to grab a hold of this moment. But right now, we're going to um, 
look, just remember the fact that the rhythms for life are here. The rhythms for life are here for us. God wants to build them into your world. I wanna encourage you, church, don't just let the currents of this world, don't let the currents and the ways of this world lead you away like an undertow. Don't let weariness come on top of you. Don't let fear press you and shape your life, making it into whatever it pleases. Instead, choose life, build rhythms for life. And because you know what? Jesus is here and He will help you if you ask Him. The Word is here to guide you if you will let it. The Holy Spirit will strengthen and enable you to do it. Just choose to make the decision today. So in just a minute, I just wanna pray for you, but maybe you're in this place and you're saying, I haven't made that decision for Jesus. Or maybe you're watching us online and you're saying, I haven't made that decision, but I wanna make that decision. I want that stability. I want the ability to choose. I want to have life flow into my life. Then if that's you, I'd love the opportunity to pray for you. You know, if you're uh, watching on our Facebook platform, then just type into the comments, I wanna ask Jesus into my life. If, that's, if you're watching on our online platform, then just hit, there's a little button there just to the right-hand side of the screen. Just hit it, it's a raise hand button. Just hit that raise hand button and then we can pray that prayer together. As we pray that prayer together, you know what? God's gonna come into your heart. He's gonna come into your life in, in a heartbeat and in that moment. So why don't we pray right now? Dear God, I thank you for being here today. I thank you for being with me. Thank you for showing me how much you love me. Dear Lord, I ask Jesus to come into my heart, to come into my life, to forgive me of my past and give me a fresh start today. Be my Lord, be my Saviour, be my King and my friend and help me to live a life that is pleasing and honouring of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is so exciting. If you're in this place and you have made that decision, I encourage you, if you've, somebody has brought you here today, make sure that you tell them that you made that decision today. If you've done it on our online platform, I encourage you, make sure you've typed that into the, into the comments on Facebook or to hit that little raise hand because one of our team will connect with you. We want to help you on this journey that you've been, that you've begun. It's an amazing journey and we just want to help you in it. But church, I just want to pray for you today. If maybe you're in this place and you're saying, I want to, I need to make some changes in my life. I need to choose some rhythms for life. Maybe you've let, you've let some things go past. Then let me pray for you today. Father God, I thank you so much for your word, Lord God, which brings clarity and understanding to our hearts, Lord God. It brings light to our hearts. And so, Father, even as you've spoken to us today, Lord God, and you've challenged us, Lord God, to have a little look at our lives and the rhythms of our lives, Lord God, to see what how they are as we've come out of this season. Lord, I just pray, Father, that, that you would show to us the things that need to be changed in our lives, Lord God. And Father, as you show them to us, Lord God, I pray, Father God, for every heart to be open to receive Your direction, Lord God, to receive Your Word to them, Lord God. And Father, this day we pray and ask, Lord, help us to change the things that need to be changed, Lord God, that our life, Father, might once again be strong in the rhythms for life, Lord God, that our life would lead us in our habits and our rhythms, Lord God, would lead us in the life that You have for us. Lord, that we might truly bring glory and honour to You in Jesus' Name. Amen. Amen. Well, church, it's been so amazing to be with you. And for our online, um, our, on, those that are watching us online, I pray that you have an amazing, amazing week. What an incredible message today. Thank you, Pastor Georgie. And if you were blessed by that, why don't you drop some emojis in the chat right now? Also, a great way to stay connected is through one of our many friendship groups. So if you are not yet connected to a friendship group, head to our website to find the group just for you. Thank you for spending your Sunday with us and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday for another great service. Coming up next is Kid Mania. Kid Mania. 
Hi guys, welcome to Kidmania Online. We're so excited to have you here. We're gonna have so much fun. Parents with younger children, could I encourage you to download the Bible app for kids? It's a great and free resource. Also, check out the Enjoy Church website where you can like and subscribe to the Kidmania Online YouTube channel. And also the Enjoy app for all the other resources that we have available to the Kidmania families. Okay, are you ready to get started? Here we go. Are you ready to praise? Oh, oh, I feel like I can't fly Your burden is so light, so surreal No hesitation, it's for real Oh, oh, I saw faith, hope, and love collide The devil down for the cow and Jesus it is finished on the tree Jesus, I'm nothing without you with me Everything else will do me no good Oh, 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 oh Living free, knowing nothing can stop you As for me and my world, I won't stop no Nothing better than this, I fire Better than this, I tell ya I have freedom in English Nothing better than this, what's better than this
time. That's right, it is Tetris. And so, to play Tetris, you have to have a bit of wisdom to know which shapes you should position where. And so, it's not gonna be easy for, for Esther and Ezra because they're gonna be on level nine. The, the blocks are gonna be coming down very quickly and they're gonna have to really make some quick decisions, but wise decisions, in how they position them. Let's see how they go. Hey kids, have you noticed that you can become smart from the things you learn in books, at school, or online? Did you know that there is a big difference between being smart and being wise? We can become smart as we learn and practice, but wisdom is a bit different. We're not born with wisdom. We can gain some wisdom as we grow older and learn from our experiences, Wisdom can also be shared with us by those we look up to, people like our leaders, our teachers, and our parents. But best of all, we can ask God directly to give us wisdom. In James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If you need wisdom, you should ask our good God and He will give it to you generously. He won't be angry at you for asking, and He won't blame you for needing Him. How good is that? The Bible encourages us to ask for many things, including wisdom. God wants His people to have wisdom because wisdom helps us to make good decisions that are good for ourselves and others. In the Bible, we can read about King Solomon. He was the wisest king that ever lived. He had amazing wisdom, but he didn't start off as a king with all this wisdom. He wasn't born with wisdom. It was given to him by God. One night, as King Solomon slept, God appeared to him in a dream. He asked him what he would like God to give him. Solomon answered God saying, All I ask from you is wisdom, so I might rule well. God responded to Solomon saying, Since you have asked for wisdom, and not a long life, or riches for yourself, nor the death of your enemies, but for wisdom to lead my people, I will give you what you asked for, and I will give you what you didn't ask for. I will give you wisdom and a heart that knows and understands what is right. There will be no king like you. If you walk in my ways, you will have riches, honor, and a long life. From that point on, King Solomon had wisdom that was given to him from God. It wasn't long before everyone was about to see that wisdom in action. Soon after the dream, two women came to see the king. Both were in great distress. My Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a child, as did she. Last night, this woman's child died. She put him next to me. I woke up, found her dead boy in my bed. She took my child, the one before your feet. Lies, lies. This is my child. Her child is dead. This was a very tricky situation. Obviously, one of the women was not telling the truth. 
no one could figure out what to do, so they were brought to King Solomon to see if he could work out who was telling the truth. It was up to him to decide which was the rightful mother. This wasn't an easy decision to make. To make the right decision would require great wisdom. Solomon listened to the two women argue. He observed their behavior. He knew one woman was lying, but how could he discover which one was the liar and which one told the truth? That's not your child. You are lying. You lied to the king. You're lying. Silence. Guard. Draw your sword. Cut the baby in two. And give each woman half. The guard drew his sword and was about to cut the baby in two. No! Spare the child. She can have him. Do not kill him. Go ahead. Cut the thing in two. Neither of us shall have him. Solomon saw how each woman reacted. He knew who was telling the truth. Only the true mother of the child would cry out for the child to live. Wow, what an amazing example of wisdom. Wisdom is so important because sometimes when we have to make a decision, there can be more than one good option. Wisdom is the ability to choose not just a good thing, but choose the best thing. When we use wisdom, we are able to look at a situation and know the best way to act in that situation. Here are three things we can learn from King Solomon. Number one, we need to ask for wisdom above all else. In James chapter one, verse five, it says, if you need wisdom, you should ask our good God and he will give it to you generously. He won't be angry at you for asking and he won't blame you for needing him. In Proverbs chapter four, verse seven, it says, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And with that wisdom, develop understanding. Number two, wisdom is wasted if we don't use it. Wisdom can only help us in our life if we actually use it in our day-to-day -day life. There's no point knowing what is right and then not doing it. That's a waste. God doesn't want us to, to waste wisdom. He wants us to use wisdom in every area of our lives. He wants us to be blessed by it and He wants others to be blessed too. We just can't go wrong doing things God's way. Number three, we can be certain of godly wisdom because it matches what is taught in the Bible. It can be hard sometimes to work out what is wisdom and what's not wisdom. Some things can seem right to us even though they are wrong. God has given us his perfect words in the Bible to help us. God's word is flawless. That means that there is nothing in it that is wrong or untrue or unwise. So if we lean on his words and take them to heart, asking him to, to help us to understand it and do it, we will always find ourselves walking in the ways of godly wisdom. It says in Psalm chapter 18, verse 30, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who look to him for protection. How about we pray? Lord God, I just want to thank you for every young person and every family member that is watching online right now. And I just want to pray for your wisdom to fill their hearts and fill their minds. I pray, Lord God, you would give us all a desire, Lord, to, to learn the things that we need to learn, to go into your word, to seek out more wisdom, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that as we gain all this wisdom, that we would use it, that you would give us opportunities to use your wisdom in our lives. We know that true wisdom only comes from you, and we ask, Father, that you would bless us with it, today and always, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone at home said, Amen. Wise saying of Solomon, or not. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. Mm. Not. This is just a funny saying. So I commend the enjoyment of life. Yes, this is a wise saying of Solomon, found in Ecclesiastes 8.15. A dog that bites the hand that feeds it usually licks the boots that kick it. Mm. Not. This is just hard to say. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. <laughs> yes, this is a wise saying of Solomon, found in Proverbs 12.11. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm. Not. 
This is what mums say to make you clean your room. <laughs> People may plan all kinds of things, but the Lord's will is going to be done. Yes, this is a wise saying of Solomon, found in Proverbs 19.21. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouth shut, they seem intelligent. Yes. This is a wise saying of Solomon, found in Proverbs 17, 28. What we do in this life echoes in eternity. Not. This is a saying from a movie. Whatever has happened before will happen again. Whatever has been done before will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Yes, this is a wise saying of Solomon, found in Ecclesiastes 1.9 They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Not. This was William Wallace. Thanks for tuning in to Kidmania Online. We hope you have a fantastic week. Full of faith and fun. Because at Kidmania, that's, that's who we are. Kidmania, Kidmania, that's who we are, that's who we are. Well, a massive thank you to our incredible Kidmania team for that fun program. This week, let's continue to lean in, reach out and stay connected. Have an incredible week.